This is section 61 of Mark Twain's speeches by Mark Twain. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Queen Victoria by Mark Twain. Read by John Greenman. Address to the British Schools and Universities Club at Delmonico's, Monday, May 25th, 1908, in honor of Queen Victoria's birthday. Mr. Clemens told the story of his duel with a rival editor, how he practiced firing at a barn door and failed to hit it. But a friend of his took off the head of a little bird at thirty-five yards and attributed the shot to Mark Twain. The duel did not take place. Mr. Clemens continued as follows. It also happened that I was the means of stopping dueling in Nevada, for a law was passed sending all duelists to jail for two years, and the governor, hearing of my marksmanship, said that if he got me, I should go to prison for the full term. That's why I left Nevada, and I have not been there since. You do me a high honor indeed in selecting me to speak of my country in this commemoration of the birthday of that noble lady whose life was consecrated to the virtues and the humanities and to the promotion of lofty ideals, and was a model upon which many a humbler life was formed and made beautiful while she lived and upon which many such lives will still be formed in the generations that are to come, a life which finds its just image in the star which falls out of its place in the sky and out of existence, but whose light still streams with unfaded luster across the abysses of space long after its fires have been extinguished at their source. As a woman, the queen was all that the most exacting standards could require. As a far-reaching and effective beneficent moral force, she had no peer in her time among either monarchs or commoners. As a monarch, she was without reproach in her great office. We may not venture, perhaps, to say so sweeping a thing as this in cold blood about any monarch that preceded her upon either her own throne or upon any other. It is a colossal eulogy, but it is justified. In those qualities of the heart which beget affection in all sorts and conditions of men, she was rich, surprisingly rich, and for this she will still be remembered and revered in the far-off ages when the political glories of her reign shall have faded from vital history and fallen to a place in that scrap-heap of unverifiable odds and ends which we call tradition. Which is to say, in briefer phrase, that her name will live always, and with it her character, a fame rare in the history of thrones, dominions, principalities, and powers, since it will not rest upon harvested selfish and sordid ambitions, but upon love, earned and freely vouchsafed. She mended broken hearts where she could, but she broke none. What she did for us in America in our time of storm and stress we shall not forget and whenever we call it to mind, we shall always remember the wise and righteous mind that guided her in it and sustained and supported her, Prince Albert's. We need not talk any idle talk here tonight about either possible or impossible war between the two countries. There will be no war while we remain sane and the son of Victoria and Albert sits upon the throne. In conclusion, I believe I may justly claim to utter the voice of my country in saying that we hold him in deep honor, and also in cordially wishing him a long life and a happy reign. End of Queen Victoria by Mark Twain Read by John Greenman